Hello, my name is Randy Mullen. I am the Program Manager for Textron Aviation for the Wheels Up program. Today we're making this video to provide additional information to the maintenance technicians to address cabin seat issues experienced on the Wheels Up King Air 350 fleet. This can be a grounding issue if the passenger seat cannot be tracked back into the takeoff and landing position or if it's tracked into the aisle preventing egress. There are basically two controls on every passenger seat. One is for the recline mechanism which is the button shown in this slide and two is the track and swivel lever located on the front of the seat armrest. The normal reported conditions experienced by this fleet have been that the seat will not swivel or track. The secondary write-up that happens less frequently is that the recline mechanism will not operate. We believe many of the issues may be related to the brackets located within the armrest being bent due to incorrect maintenance procedures. Therefore, we have developed this presentation to assist those in the field in adjusting these seats. The seats should not be adjusted through the armrests. According to the AMM, which is currently in revision, and previous versions, the proper method to adjust these seats is to remove the bottom seat cushion and access the controls through the seat pan. This part of the video was made at the BE Aerospace facility in Miami, Florida, and we appreciate their support in developing this training aid. As you can see, the technician is moving the seat pan, removing the seat pan screws. There are several things that you need to do in order to make a check of this seat for proper operation. But the first and most important aspect is to remove the screw, washer, and spring attachment that holds the track and swivel ca cable in place. Without doing this, if you access the control lever in the armrest, you potentially can damage the bracket. You can see the technician has released the, the control cable. In this process, he is currently changing the actual cable. This is part of the demonstration that we will go into as far as if the cable cannot be properly adjusted or if the cable is broken. This slide contains information with respect to parts and the parts have been verified to be set up properly according to these numbers in the TAPD system. These are all the parts required to replace the swivel and track cable as well as the left hand and right hand brackets for the control cable if they are damaged. The technician has cut the crimp on the end of the control cable and is now removing the bezel for the lever for the travel or for the travel and swivel adjustment lever. Since the cable has been loosened in the base, there should be a no obstruction when removing this. He's removing the two Phillips head screws that retain it into the cable control bracket. And as you can see, he now has access without any force on that bracket. The cable is loose. Now in this demonstration, he is replacing the cable, so therefore he's going to disconnect the other cable from the other end of the cable from the lever, which is held in place by some aluminum tape. Once that is removed, 
the cable can be removed from the armrest and, th and through the conduit that is installed in the armrest and seat base. A new cable is simply put into the conduit which is currently installed. Obviously the end without the crimp. He's feeding it through the conduit and it's coming out the seat base. He will pull the cable the rest of the way through and then take the crimped end and put it into the lever assembly. Again, putting some aluminum tape there to help retain it in the groove. The bezel is reinstalled in the armrest and the tension is taken up on the cable coming through the conduit. There's a couple of different ways to cut the cable to the proper length. Uh, one you can cut it approximately four inches from where it comes out of the conduit. But the way that BE Aerospace does it in production is to go ahead and run it through the guide on the lever bracket and mark it with a permanent marker. Once marked, the technician would go ahead and cut the cable and install a crimp. You can see the crimp going on the cable now. Crimp being placed in the tool and then the tool positioned to the permanent mark on the cable. At that point, it's crimped. The cable excess is cut. and the cable can then be installed into the lever assembly. Once installed, the retaining washer and screw and spring are reattached. This holds the cable in place. And as you can see, it now actuates and the seat will move back and forth and will swivel and track. Now the next important item is the proper adjustment. And in many cases, the cable does not need to be replaced. However, it may need to be adjusted. This cable can be adjusted by the nuts at the bracket on the aft end of the seat. And it basically extends or shortens the length of conduit. And this will basically adjust a lever underneath the seat. This shows, this slide shows the side of the bottom of the assembly in the left hand picture. You will note a lever that comes out of the base assembly. When the seat control is properly adjusted, this lever 
will be flush with the side of the base. If it's not adjusted properly, there may be some of the lever extending past the base material, and this will require adjustment of the conduit cable. Again, this shows in the right hand slide, it's slightly out from the base. The left hand picture shows the cable adjustment location. This is one of the first things to do when getting a squawk where the seat will not track or swivel. By looking at this lever, it can be determined whether or not possibly a cable adjustment can be made. With the lever on the seat not being touched on the armrest, this lever should be flush. If it's not, adjustment is required. So here the BE technician is running it through its paces again, making sure that it's able to swivel to move the assembly. Now the bezel is being installed. It was temporarily placed into the armrest. The two Phillips head screws are going in. Here's where the technician is adjusting the cable conduit. He's probably seen where the lever assembly is extended past the base. The technician has loosened the cable to get a little bit additional slack in installation of the seat lever bezel, Phillips head screws. As you can see, most of the work for this is actually done underneath the seat base. And from reports from the field, we believe that in many instances, people have tried to adjust these levers and cables through the armrest, damaging the brackets. If you find a bracket that is bent or broken, the part numbers provided earlier in this presentation can be ordered and these brackets should be replaced. Then the adjustment procedure should be performed. Okay, his bezel is now reattached. He's reattaching the control cable and going to do one final check. This work can all be performed inside the aircraft without removing the seat. Again, operationally checked. Everything tracks and swivels okay. And what they're trying to do now is get a picture of that lever and the plate. As you can see, when the lever on the armrest is released, it is flush. That shows that that's been properly adjusted. Okay, that concludes the, uh, the program. If there's any questions, uh, you can contact Randy Mullen in the Fleet Program Office at Textron Aviation. My number is 
517-4361. And we hope this has been beneficial to aiding you in properly adjusting these seats and getting our mutual customer wheels up aviation back in the air. Thank you for your time.